Welcome to another episode of Real Beauty, Real Food, and Real Life. This is SJ here, and I've been bringing to you several episodes of Cooking for Two. But I haven't been in an episode, so now it's my turn. Yes, I had to do it. So we are going to be doing a episode of Cooking. So I want you to sit back, relax, hit that like button. If you're not subscribed, hit subscribe and keep watching this video. Thanks. Welcome to Cooking for Two. I am your host today, SJ. Did you think I was going to have all these cooking sessions and not do one? Ha! You know I had to come through and show y'all some love. And hopefully y'all show me some love by, by hitting that like button and follow me on my social media accounts, Real Beauty Food Life and Sensation. Alright, so today we are going to be doing cooking for two. Yes. If you've been following my channel for a really long time, probably been up for a little bit over a year. Um, uh, I'm going to link it below, but I cooked buffalo ribs and I did a video on it now if I say steaks sorry but I'm gonna be doing buffalo ribs and the reason I choose buffalo ribs buffalo is some really good taste in fish if you haven't tried it you gotta try it majority of the time people don't like it because it's filled with bones but if you go to a fish market and they're hard to find because my my city doesn't have them. At least I haven't found them here in the city for buffalo ribs. I barely even find buffalo fish. So my cousin gets me some from Arkansas. And I get it. That's how I get it. And I keep it frozen until I get ready to use it. But anyway, with that, um, there's no hardly no bones. That is the whole real reason of using the buffalo rib. So you know how you have, like, let's say you want to serve fish to the kids and and, you know, you know they can't do the bones. Now, yes, it has one big center bone and then some teeny beanie bones, but not the kind that's going to choke you or anything like that. And matter of fact, this is all filet. Matter of fact, the rib part is all filet, so you don't even get the teeny beanie bones. But that's what's in the main fish is the teeny beanie bones. So anyway, to make this, you're going to need your buffalo ribs and your Andes fish seasoning. Now, the reason we use Andes fish seasoning is because this fish seasoning has all the seasonings you need and it don't add no more salt you can add what you want to it i suggest do not add salt i might add a little bit of pepper for a little spice but that don't go past that it does it all i'm gonna rinse my fish off and then i'm gonna coat it and i'm gonna refrigerate it for just a little bit just to get that in there and then i'll come back and cook it we are going to be having Brussels sprouts. Um, if you were watching one of the previous segments, um, my sister came on and did the Brussels sprouts. And I'm going to tell you, I hate Brussels sprouts. I do. But when I tasted the charred ones, it really made a difference. Um, they taste like bitter-ass cabbage. Yes, they do. But by doing it this way, you really enjoy it. Uh, I'm going to do mine a little bit different than what she did because I came up with this while she was doing it. I'm like, you know what? I got an idea. So I'm going to show you that. And then we have some sweet potatoes. Um, you can use any. You don't have to use sweet potatoes. You can just go ahead and get the frozen things. But I'm going to make french fries. So I'm going to go ahead and clean everything. I clean all of my stuff. And then I'm going to get the french fries ready because those, those are the ones that take the longest. Wash the potatoes, use a brush. You can get it from the Dollar Tree and just scrub all the little extras off because I don't peel them. You know, the, they're stuck inside of the skin. That's why I don't peel them. All right. And then we'll be back to show you how I'm going to handle these uh, Brussels sprouts and then the uh, buffalo rib. Yeah, this is real life. Okay. So I'm going to tell you this right now. <laughs> When we do this kind of stuff, or when I do anything that relates to this kind of stuff, I don't cook it ahead of time and then say, okay, until I get it right. I cook it the one and only time. And the reason I do that, it's real life. 
You don't want to keep following stuff and then you cook it and it don't turn out just like that person did. That's because they probably did it four or five times and then they finally got it right and now they go ahead and start demo with it. Once you get used to cooking a certain way, it's just automatic. So, me trying these Brussels sprouts a different way uh, but still similar to what my sister did is going to be new. But I'm going to include you. So, I hope y'all take time out. Hit the like button. And don't forget to follow us on the social media, Real Beauty for Food Life. And, of course, you can follow me, Sensational, on Snapchat or even Instagram. We're, we should be on some of those. Twitter, yeah, hit me up the Twitter. I'm not one of the people I ain't scared to talk back to you. So, you can say whatever you want. If I catch it, I'm going to say something. I'll reply. Uh, you know, I don't care if I had a million subscribers, which I know I don't. But if I did, if I can see it out there, I'm going to respond back to you. I'm not one of those that's like, oh... No, because why not? We're being social. That's why we're on social media, right? Anyway, let's get started. All right, so we're back here. Um, what I've done already is I've cut off the bottom of the Brussels sprouts. And then I cut them in half. Now, what I'm going to do different is I've melted some butter. And I'm going to sprinkle its everyday seasoning. And this is what I got from Trader Joe's. I'm just going to put it in the bottom. And then, and I'm taking each one of them and I'm dipping them into the pan. Now, once I get them completed, I will go ahead and put them on the cooking sheet. And go ahead and do the 425 and watch them for the 25 minutes because I'm kind of uh, sauteing them now I don't know for sure if the 25 minutes is going to be too much so that's why I'm doing it that way now get those on the pan and then the potatoes I'm just cutting them up like this so hopefully you can see that this this size I still have the skin on them but I do clean them like I said and then I'm going to put them in a on a, a cookie sheet. All right. So I have sauteed the little cabbages. And if you can see them, you see the seasoning really well. And I am going to put my sweet potatoes on the same rack. And we're going to put them in the oven for the 425. Now comes the best part, the fish. So you're going to start off with... A skillet I'm using a skillet no I don't want to put it in a pan fry because I like the pan fry I like the pan fry instead of deep pan fry yeah so I'm gonna get down my canola oil and I'm going to line the pan uh, with about probably about a half an inch of oil because to deep fry it we're not doing that we're frying fish so there's a difference if you put it in that much grease you're deep frying the fish you don't need to deep fry fresh fish unless you work for a restaurant, then that's what they do. We're doing home shit, okay? So just a little bit. So we are now ready to do our fish. Um, I put my Andy seasoning in there. I put it inside of a little bag. I don't use the uh, grocery bags like everybody else does because sometimes they get holes in them and, you know, it's just easier to put it in a Maggie bag. You know what I call this Maggie bag. You'll figure it out. <laughs> anyway, um, after you get it in there, make sure your grease is good and hot. How do you know it's hot? You see, I barely have nothing on my finger. I think it's hot. <laughs> then you want to put it down. Look at that coating. Can you see that coating? Okay, that coating is nice. And then put it on in there. Yeah. You just line it up. I usually uh, cook mine a, a little bit, and then I'll turn it, and then I cook it a little bit more, then I turn it, cook it a little bit more, and then it's done. Remember, uh, fish doesn't take as long as uh, chicken does. And, of course... With these being ribs, you know, it's almost like having a boneless piece of meat. All right, 
So when you are charring your uh, broccoli, oh my God, I caught them broccoli. Okay, so when you are charring the Brussels sprouts, in the last couple of minutes, if they're not charred like you want them to be, go ahead and uh, put that oven on broil for the last couple of minutes and just watch All them. All right, here. cooking for two. Here is your finished product. We have the buffalo rib fish. We have the sweet potatoes sliced up. And then we have the charred Brussels sprouts. And by the way, these came out awesome. Love it. So again, if you've not had um, buffalo fish, the rib style that is, you can see as you go in there, it's fluffy. Now I like mine fried a little hard, but see, otherwise anybody knows buffalo rib, they know it's got a lot of bones, but when you get the rib portion, you don't get that many of the bones. You got a big bone down the center, and then there's a few little, little ones, but you can't even see those. So, all right, so uh, this is your episode of Cooking for Two. This is SJ here, and we are definitely going to stop and eat. So if you want to see my original uh, buffalo fish uh, cooking video, I'm going to link it below. So yeah, check it out. Thanks for watching. But I got bloopers. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. This is stop. Let's do this right. Okay, so I had to stop the video because I heard all this lawnmower and stuff. These people lawnmower in the after, early afternoon. It's hot in the hot. Okay, real life, y'all, that happens. Anyway. Make sure you have your grease ready. How do you know it's ready? Okay, that sucked, didn't it? Hey, y'all. Thanks for uh, sticking around for the cooking for two. Um, this is my final thoughts on it. Um, you know that this is the first season that we're doing it. And there's eight episodes. So hopefully you all got to check out all of the episodes out. Um, what I do want to say is that the fish was awesome. I mean, we ate it all. No freaking leftovers, okay? Now those Brussels sprouts... They need just a little more salt on them. But otherwise, they were awesome. They actually taste good. I mean, y'all hate Brussels sprouts coming up because I sure hated them. So, uh, if you reach the end of this video, because this is the only place I'm going to put this at is the end of the video, that uh, you like Brussels sprouts or you don't like our Brussels sprouts, or if you got a unique way of cooking them, comment below, okay? Comment something about the Brussels sprouts. You like them, you don't like them. I'm going to do a giveaway at the end of the season um it's eight episodes so at the end of the final one i'm gonna be doing a giveaway i'm gonna do it live so keep keep your notifications on and uh, don't forget to comment below and i tell you wine after this was just a perfect thing to do ain't that right maggie <laughs> maggie the maggie hi say hi <laughs> Bye, y'all. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit the subscribe.